Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing five meals that I eat every single week with you guys. So this is a little bit different than my standard recipe videos, which are a little more formal, if you will. Um, these are just meals that I eat in my everyday life as a vegan. If you didn't know, which you probably do, I am a full-time recipe developer and food photographer. I have my own recipe website, so I'm always making new recipes for that. But honestly, at the end of the day, sometimes I am so tired that I do not wanna spend any extra time in the kitchen and the meals that I eat and cook for myself uh, later in the evenings are usually pretty simple. I mean, obviously I eat all the leftovers in my blog, but that doesn't carry over every single day, you know? And now that I live with my boyfriend, I have to cook for him too. And combined, we eat a lot of food. So we cook a lot of food, but we also don't like to spend too much money on our grocery bills. We like to keep things pretty wholesome and stick to minimally processed foods, but we still like foods that taste really, really good. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my five top meals I eat, and honestly, I do eat some variation of these meals every single week. So if you're looking for some quick and easy fixes, let's get right into it. First up, we are going to be making burrito bowls. I love this recipe because it's really easy, perfect for meal prep, and really affordable. So to start out, we're going to be making a big batch of my Instant Pot Chipotle Lime Black Beans. We're going to add some dry black beans to our Instant Pot along with some garlic and chipotle peppers in adobo. This is what they look like. I do too because I like it kind of spicy. We're also going to be adding some vegetable broth. I like to use vegetable bouillon, which is a concentrated paste. And then I just add water to that afterwards. And once you stir it all together, the paste dissolves into the water and you have your vegetable broth. And it's a lot more cost effective too. So I would definitely recommend looking into that. But we're going to cover our Instant Pot, set that to ceiling and cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then in the meantime, we're also going to be making some brown rice. I personally prefer to make a big batch of this at the beginning of the week and I use short grain brown rice and then it will last me through the week and I will use it in various meals as you will see here. But I'm pretty sure you guys know how to cook rice. Just add water to it, bring it to a boil, cook on low for about 45 minutes and you're good to go. So the final component for these bowls are some stir fried veggies. And this does vary slightly for me for week to week, but I always like to start out with onions for burrito bowls. I caramelize them in vegetable broth. I've shown you guys how to do this before, but basically you're going to add an onion to a nonstick pan with a splash of veggie broth and cook it down until all of the water starts to evaporate. And then you're going to deglaze the pan by adding more vegetable broth. And this helps the onion get more color and flavor. And you can really, really char it if you are patient enough. Um, but and today, I wasn't really feeling that patient. So I just threw in my peppers too and saute that down a bit for the peppers to get tender. You can also char the peppers using the same technique. But once everything looks nice and golden, we're also going to add in our sliced mushrooms, some diced jalapeno, fresh garlic, and some stems of cilantro. They have just as so much flavor as the leaves, so I like to chop those up and throw them in there, as well as some spices. I like to use some cumin, chili powder, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. So then you're going to saute this down until all of the veggies get nice and soft and tender, and the juices from the mushroom release and add even more flavor to this dish. You can really use any veggies you want. This does vary slightly for me for week to week, but I do generally use peppers, onions, and mushrooms. You could use larger portobello mushrooms. You could use whatever pepper is on sale. You can vary the spices a little every week to keep things interesting but either way, once that's done, you're going to remove it from the heat and we're ready to assemble our burrito bowls. So obviously our rice has finished cooking. We're just going to fluff that with a fork and put it in a bowl along with those veggies that we sauteed and our beans should be about done cooking now too. So the final step for this is to add in some lime juice and to take out those chipotle peppers from earlier and dice them up and then toss them back in and mix them with the beans. If you want them to be less spicy, you don't have to do this step, but I like to do that for extra flavor. So then after we have our beans, we're also going to add some avocado, cilantro, and I like to add a drizzle of hot sauce. And then I also like to top it with nutritional yeast, which gives a nice cheesy flavor sort of like a queso to the dish but that is pretty much it for our burrito bowl you don't have to use avocado every week you can switch up the hot sauce you can do refried beans instead of black beans you can use a different type of rice or quinoa maybe make a cashew cream instead there are tons of ways to switch it up just a little every week to keep it interesting Next up, we're going to be making an easy veggie pasta. This is actually my favorite meal to make after yoga because I get home pretty late and it's ready in like 15 to 20 minutes max. So first things first, you're going to boil some water and cook your favorite pasta. I typically like to use chickpea pasta because it has a little bit more protein and I don't add another protein source to this meal, but you can use any other pasta variety that I really like. And then while the pasta is cooking, we're going to saute some veggies and then combine it all in another large pot. So really this depends on whatever I have in my fridge. Um, 
um, based on the week, my veggies will vary just a little bit. But again, as usual, I start out with some vegetable broth and my favorite things to add to my pasta are olives and garlic. So it's sort of like a puttanesca pasta. If you want a recipe for that, I do have an Instant Pot one. I will link it below. But first I saute those olives and garlic with a vegetable broth and some Italian seasoning and red chili flakes to sort of rehydrate everything and really get those flavors going so they'll be prominent in my pasta. Then I like to add in some mushrooms and zucchini and today I was adding Swiss chard to my pasta so I added the stems of it. Uh, also for the record, this is for me and my boyfriend so the portion size of the veggies is a little bit bigger. But I basically just cook this down. Sometimes I'll add fresh thyme, sometimes I'll add broccoli. I'll add literally whatever I have in my fridge. and then. I add in my pasta sauce. I like to use one from Whole Foods, but again, you can use whatever you like. And then I just add that with the veggies and simmer it just a little bit to heat it up. And then at about this time, our pasta is magically done cooking. So I drain it, but I don't rinse it. And then I add in any other leafy greens like spinach or chard. They don't really need to cook for very long. So I just add it in with the hot pasta and then I mix everything together into the noodles, get it coated in the sauce and we are good to go. It is a really easy filling meal. It's a great way to get in veggies. It's hearty, it has plant-based protein. And it's pretty much perfect. So that's really what I do for the evening. Uh, I always do like to top it with some black pepper. And then today I had some pine nuts in my fridge. So I decided to top them with that, but that is totally optional. You can do whatever you want. I would also suggest topping this with nutritional yeast. That would definitely make it even more cheesy and delicious. Or you could add in vegan cheese. Another easy, versatile recipe that's ready in a very short amount of time. Up next, I am making a very loosely coined Asian bowl. Um, I like to have some sort of Asian stir fry or Asian thing uh, every week. Today, the weather was a little bit warmer, so I decided to make my Asian slaw, which I make by adding some rice vinegar, tamari, and lime juice into a bowl, along with some toasted sesame seeds and some Thai basil and green onions and ginger and garlic. So that is essentially the marinade for our crunchy veggies, but I also do like to add some chili oil and sesame oil. I'm gonna making this for myself. They're optional in the recipe, which is on my blog. I will link it below. But once you have all of that, you are going going to whisk it together. And like I said, it was our marinade. So now we're going to add a ton of crunchy veggies. So I like to add some carrots, some sliced cucumber and some crunchy cabbage. And you're just going to mix this all together and let it sit. This is great for meal prep too, because the veggies will stay crunchy a few days in the fridge and it actually gets better over time. So after you make that, you can do whatever you want with it, but I like to serve it with some crispy tofu. This is my three ingredient crispy tofu. You're going to need a block of firmer, extra firm tofu, and you are going to want to press it. I have this super handy and convenient tofu press that I actually got with my juicer, um, but you can also use a towel. You can buy another tofu press online. However you want to get rid of some of the extra liquid, you do that. But after you have removed all that extra moisture from the tofu, we are going to slice it. So I like to make pretty uniform cubes. And the first thing I do with my block of tofu is to cut it in half. And then I take each of those halves and I, again, cut them in half. And then I cut those halves in halves to make four even strips. And then I flip it and then I cut that again into four even strips. You have some nice uniform cubes and they all cook pretty evenly once you put them in the oven too. So we're going to transfer our tofu into a bowl and then we're going going to coat it in some tamari. I'm using low sodium tamari. You could also use soy sauce or liquid aminos. We're going to toss those in the tamari to sort of soak it in, into the tofu cubes and coat them with this golden, salty, delicious goodness. And then we're going to coat it in nutritional yeast, about two tablespoons, but the more the merrier, it does get even more delicious if you add more. You can also add in other seasonings that you like, like garlic powder or black pepper, or if you're doing this with a different style recipe you can add in other seasonings but i like to keep things pretty dang simple so now we're going to add our tofu to a baking sheet i like to line mine with a silicone mat i find that it makes it crispier but you can also use parchment paper you're going to pop that into the oven and cook it for a few minutes and then take it out and flip your tofu cubes and as you can see the bottom part gets really nice and shiny and crispy and delicious you're going to pop that into the oven for a few more minutes and then it is ready to serve but just for the record, I'm gonna give you a gratuitous close-up shot of this tofu. It does make a large amount of tofu. You can also easily double this recipe if you're doing it for meal prep and it lasts well in the fridge. I actually like to reheat it with my air fryer. It gets even more crispy that way. But this is a staple in my house and I make it at least once a week. And that is pretty much it for our quote Asian bowls. I'm going to use some of my leftover rice, add in the slaw, add in the crispy tofu, and we're good to go. When the weather's colder, sometimes I'll do a more Asian inspired stir fry, but this is what I am currently loving at the moment. 
So then the next up, we're going to be basic and have some avocado toast, but I like to load mine up. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. First, I'm going to show you how to make pickled red onions because these have become a staple in my diet and they're so easy to make and I think that you all should make them. So first up, you're going to need a red onion, which is very cheap and easy and accessible and affordable grocery stores. Um, you're just going to chop the ends off and if you want to, you can use a mandolin to thinly slice the onion, but honestly, I prefer my strips to be a little bit thick and I cut pretty evenly because I have a lot of knife experience. So I just cut my onion by hand. You can do it in half rings or quarter rings. I like half rings because I like to, my strips to be a little bit longer. Um, but after you cut your onion up, you're going to shove it into a glass mason jar, about a quart size mason jar. You can also use another glass Tupperware if you want, but I find that a jar works the best. And then we're going to make our pickling liquid with some black peppercorns, some salt, and some sugar. I have a list for substitutes on the block if you don't want to use sugar, but you really don't need too much, so I just use cane sugar. But you're going to bring this to a boil with some vinegar and water over a saucepan. And then once it comes to a boil, you are going to pour that over your onions. And the hot water and vinegar is going to pickle the onions or quick pickled onions, if you will. You're just gonna push them down a little bit with a spatula and set it aside, let it cool to room temperature and something magical happens. Well, it's science, but you know, we can pretend it's magic too. But the red onions turn this really pretty pink color uh, from the skin of the onions. And these things are so delicious. They're crunchy, salty, slightly sweet, super tangy, perfect to put on avocado toast or in salads. And they're really cheap to make. So I always try to have a jar in my fridge. So now back to my avocado toast that may be basic, but maybe it's not so basic, but I am obsessed with this Trader Joe's Sriracha Baked Tofu. I put this on my avocado toast most days because I like to get some plant-based protein in all my meals and I really like the ingredients. I could probably make this myself, but I'm kind of lazy and I just haven't figured it out yet. But I take half of this um, tofu, it's actually in two smaller blocks, and I take half of the block of tofu and I chop it up into tiny little squares and then I air fry it for 10 minutes at 360 degrees Fahrenheit and it gets nice and crispy. And in the meantime, I prep the rest of my avocado toast. So I typically use half of an avocado and I dice it up and I don't like to get bowls dirty so I just mash it with a fork inside the avocado half and in terms of bulking up the avocado I keep things pretty basic and I just like to add some salt and black pepper to it sometimes I'll add some nutritional yeast too but I wasn't feeling too crazy today and I wanted to have this in a quick jiffy so after you've mashed your avocado you are going to put it on some bread I am using some gluten-free bread but again you can use any gluten-free or non-gluten-free bread that you want. So I just spread the avocado out across the bread, then I top it with my air fried tofu. Then we put those pickled red onions on, if I'm being honest, sometimes I add way more than this, but I still wanted you guys to be able to see the avocado toast underneath. And I top it with black pepper and we are good to go. This is a very easy, quick, like 10 minute lunch for me. Um, I have it maybe more often than I would like to admit, but it's super satisfying and yummy and it always hits the spot. And for the record, I usually end up with a few extra air fried tofu cubes that don't make it on the avocado toast and I just like to eat them plain. Last but not least, my final meal is a gigantic salad because I love greens and I think everybody should. So to start out, I usually like to roast some veggies up. In this video, I am doing beets and potatoes, sweet potatoes to be exact. So to roast my beets, I just simply take the top off and then cut my beets into quarters or six, depending how thick they are. And then I wrap them in tin foil and I do try to wrap them so the open part goes to the top so they don't ooze all over your baking tray. Um, and then I just place them on a baking tray and you bake them at around 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour super easy peasy and then for our sweet potatoes again I like to keep things pretty simple and just celebrate the flavors of the potatoes themselves so I like to cut my sweet potatoes into about half inch thick rounds if they're super thick sometimes I'll cut those rounds in half as well and then I just place these on a baking tray again lined with a silicone mat I really do think this helps to caramelize the sweet potatoes and make them taste even more crispy and delicious so I just spread all those out over the mat and then I pop those in the oven at the same temperature about 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 or so minutes and then with my salads I always like to have some protein source so today I'm going to be making my smoky tempeh I have shown you guys how to make this before tempeh is a form of soybeans that are whole soybeans um, and actually is probiotics in it so to make our smoky tempeh, we're going to line it on the bottom of a nonstick pan, and then we're going to pour our marinade over it, which is a base of a cup of vegetable broth along with some maple syrup and tamari. Then we're also going to add some liquid smoke, 
some smoked paprika, and last but not least, some black pepper. I added that later, but I forgot to add it in this clip. But you're just going to whisk all that together and then pour it over your tempeh. And tempeh gets more flavor if you steam it first and then sort of saute it. So I sort of just combine this process into one by adding extra liquid to the marinade. And first we sort of steam or simmer the tempeh in this and it allows it to puff up and absorb more of the flavors of the marinade. And you're just going to keep cooking the tempeh down and flipping it occasionally as the marinade evaporates. And as you can see, the tempeh is becoming darker in color as the liquid lowers in the pan. And you're just going to flip the tempeh every two to three minutes or so. And then once it starts to get to about this point, when the marinade starts to get a little bit more sticky, you're going to flip it more rapidly. And this helps to caramelize all the sides and really get that nice, thick and juicy coating on all of our tempeh strips that we are looking for. So they'll look a little bit something like this once they're finished, be nice and bubbly and crispy and golden brown. And at this point, Point, they're pretty much ready to serve. So once our sweet potatoes are done, they will look a little bit dry on top, but as you can see from the bottoms, they get nice and crispy and golden brown. And I like to eat these warm, but I also like to make a big batch to last me for the week. And I also really enjoy eating them cold. They get almost like gooier in texture and they're really, really yummy. And then I wanted to show you guys what I do with my beets after they finish roasting. I carefully remove the tinfoil wrapper. As you can see, they are pretty hot. So I do let them slightly cool before I slice them. And I did say I did not peel my beets. So at this point, if you want to, once the beets are soft enough, you can actually just peel the skin off using your fingers. It's pretty easy. Honestly, I scrub my beets really well and personally, I just feel like it's too much of a hassle to peel my beets, so I don't mind it and I just keep the skin on and I just chop my beets into little cubes and that is pretty much it for the beets. When you roast them, they get this really nice sweet natural flavor, so you really don't need to add too much else to them. So then now we're going to make our salad. So I like to make a giant salad base of some sort of leafy green. Recently I've really been enjoying kale, um, but it's, kale is a lot more delicious if you massage it with your hands first. And then I always add some sort of dressing. This is a sesame miso dressing that I posted on my blog recently. I will link it below, but it does vary week to week. Sometimes I'll just do tahini and lemon juice. Sometimes I'll do mashed avocado and sauerkraut, or I'll do another dressing recipe. I have a ton on my blog. So whatever I have in my fridge, that's typically what I use to dress my salad, but it's usually a creamy and acidic dressing. So after you coat and massage your kale in there, I like to add in some fresh herbs. Today it was parsley. And then I add in some sweet potatoes and some beets and I also like to add in some more crunchy veggies too so I like to add the roasted elements as well as the cooked and crunchy elements so here I'm adding in some cucumber I also like to add in shredded carrots this is kind of like my veggie pasta where it really just depends what I have in my fridge and I will mix all this together to make a salad and then with the herbs too sometimes I'll add basil sometimes I'll add dill either way I put it into a bowl sometimes I just eat it straight out of the mixing bowl because I need more space and then I top it with my tempeh and that is it an easy peasy filling meal full of protein, healthy fats, and lots of veggies. Obviously my meals will vary a little bit based on the season and the time of year, like what produce is the cheapest. That will definitely influence the meals that I am cooking. Um, and also just whatever leftovers I have, like maybe one week I'll have leftover kale and the other week I'll have leftover spinach. But generally speaking, those five meals are pretty much basics and staples in my life. I make them all the time, I never get sick of them. And I think when you slightly vary your produce and your spices and your ingredients every time, they still stay nice and interesting. So I would be curious to know what some of your staple meals as a vegan are in the comments below. So if you wanna let me know, maybe just say your top one or your favorite one, or if we have any in common, let me know. We can see which one of mine is the most popular with you guys. I don't know if anyone else does my avocado toast combination, but um, you guys should start doing that because it's really, really really freaking delicious. If you liked this video and want to see more videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, like what you see here, you can hit that little subscribe button right down there. I post one to two new videos every single week. I hope you guys are having an awesome day and continue to have one, whatever time of day it is for you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.